Hey, what's up guys? If you are watching this video the day that it comes out, that means it is August 21st, 2017, and this is a pretty special day. Today is a total solar eclipse and the path of totality, which is where you will actually see the complete full eclipse of the sun, is in the US. Now it has not been uh, this set up in a very long time. So again, this is a really special occurrence and I wanna put together a video with a few tips to help you shoot a solar eclipse. But of course, these tips don't only apply to being in the path of totality or a total solar eclipse when it's in the US or anything like that. Um, so these are tips that can help you outside of today's specific event as well. So we're gonna dive into three tips that I have for you guys, but first let's talk about what you're gonna need. Now everybody maybe does it a little bit different, but the big things you're gonna need are a camera body, your lens of choice, and that might depend on what kind of shot you're gonna get a tripod and you want to make sure it's a sturdy tripod that you can really lock down and trust. And last but not least is an ND filter. You definitely need one of these to protect your camera sensor. You can use a solar filter as well. I'll get into more details on that, but make sure you have something in the form of protection for your camera. So as far as the tips go, let's talk about number one, and that is keeping your foreground in mind. Now I mentioned that it depends what kind of shot you want to get. If you want to go for something that is a very close up shot of the solar eclipse, either in totality or taking a few uh, photos throughout the different phases of partial and total solar eclipse, and then merging them together in Photoshop or something to create a really cool, uh, you know, kind of start to finish of the eclipse, then definitely shoot that way. Uh, in which case you're gonna be looking for something uh, on the longer side, you know, you're gonna wanna get as close as possible. But if you are shooting on something, you know, wider or something like that, I'd really recommend keeping your foreground in mind. We're just basically what is in the rest of the frame. Your framing in total is very important to the photo. For example, if you're shooting night stars, which I shoot a lot of, or the Milky Way or something like that, a shot of the Milky Way can be really cool. A shot of, you know, nighttime stars can be really cool. And there's nothing, you know, taking away from that for sure, but kind of setting the mood or, or putting it in perspective uh, through the foreground or through the rest of the framing can be really important and it can really up the, uh, up the quality of your photo, so to speak. So and this kind of goes into setting up your shot in general. One of the things you need to keep in mind is where the sun is going to be at at that time of the day. For me, it's around 1 p.m. that the solar eclipse will be occurring, uh, but depending on where you are, that will be different. And of course, you know, where you are trying to shoot might be affected by what's around you, tall buildings or, you know, some landscape or something like that. But figure out where the sun is going to be and also think about things that you can add to your frame or your foreground to really set up that shot even better. Now this, like I said, could be things like uh, city buildings, this could be uh, any kind of monument or landscape, really cool environment, anything like that can really add to a photo. If you're able to, I would really recommend getting there or going to a place where you want to shoot a day or two in advance. That way you can see where the sun will be at that time. It won't be exact, but it'll be really close and you can get a good idea of what your frame would look like and that will help you be ready for when you actually shoot the eclipse. Tip number two is to be careful. Now a solar eclipse is an awesome event to both shoot and to see, but it can be very dangerous for both your eyes and for your camera sensor. So you need to protect both of those things. Now, if you are in the path of totality, when it does get to that phase of a total solar eclipse, it will be safe to remove the filter, remove the glasses you might be using in order to view it. But when it is in that partial eclipse stage, it can damage your eyes as well as your sensor. So you need to protect yourself. As far as your eyes go, you can get eclipse glasses. Uh, they actually look like 3D glasses that you used to get at the movies or something like that. Of course, they work differently. These you can order online through Amazon or B&H Photo or any big retailer. You might also be able to find them at your local camera store. Now these, uh, as of today, which is August you know, 21st, uh, lately these have skyrocketed in price because of the upcoming US mainland based solar eclipse, uh, total solar eclipse that is. So, you know, that is kind of a bummer. If you're watching this later, the prices might have dropped again, but wearing something like that is gonna protect your eyes so you can actually watch the event and enjoy it. As far as your camera goes, you can buy solar filters for this specific event. Now, the research that I have done has led me to believe that you could use a strong ND filter as well. So something like a 16 stop ND filter would probably be the minimum I would flirt with. Of course, I don't wanna ruin my gear, that's really important to me and I would not recommend that you do the same. If you have the money and you can buy a solar filter, I definitely recommend doing that or if you're worried, that's gonna be the safest bet. 
Uh, but, but from what I've researched, I think that using something like a 16 stop filter or anything beyond that would suffice, especially if you're not gonna keep your shutter open very long. The last tip that I have for you guys is to use bracketing. This is a great feature and this is a tough lighting scenario. It's hard to get the uh, foreground, especially if you have some of that, as well as the solar eclipse, to really all even out and look nice. So if you're unfamiliar with bracketing, what that does is gives you a series of photos. When you click that shutter, it will give you one underexposed, one properly exposed, and one overexposed shot. That's really giving you a lot of leeway in post to work with if the solar eclipse is maybe exposed properly in this shot, but your foreground is exposed better in the shot over here or something like that. And you can merge those together to make an HDR photo. And then of course it does also give you one click, essentially three options if one turns out better than the others. Bonus tip, you definitely need to pick your lens based on the exact shot that you're going for. But you also wanna make sure there's a lens that handles backlighting well that basically won't flare or else you're gonna lose a lot of contrast and detail in your foreground or in the solar eclipse. Uh, and you could have some problems there. So you can always look up reviews. That's what I usually do if I'm not familiar with the lens I might be using. Look up a review and usually they'll mention something about flare or ghosting or anything like that. So I'd highly recommend making sure you have something that can handle the lighting situation of a solar eclipse well. And lastly, but perhaps most importantly, is take some time to enjoy this. This is something, like I said, that does not happen very often, especially being a total solar eclipse. Take some time away from the back of your camera to enjoy this. Definitely get the photos as well, but definitely enjoy the moment too. So that's it guys, I hope these tips helped you out. I would love to see the photos that you capture of the total solar eclipse. Feel free to uh, tag or DM me on at Wedding Cinema University on Instagram or on our main account, which is at Redmond Digital Media. I'm gonna put both those below here so you can find me on there. I'd love to see those photos and if you do tag or DM me, I'll make sure to check them out and leave a comment.